Mic check, mic check, yo. Hey, this is my first official, first listen of Billie Eilish's debut album. Roll it. Now, I'll be the first to admit that when Billie came out originally, like in this, this album is from 2017, her debut album or EP, I don't even know what you call it, it's only like nine or 10 tracks, it's like less than 30 minutes. But I'll be the first to admit that I didn't, I didn't give Billie the chance because I thought that I wasn't her demographic. I thought that she's obviously way young. I think when she put this album out, she was 16 and I was already like 26, 27 at that point. So in my mind, that, that was already a very big gap. And then obviously a lot of Billie's fans at that that point when she was 16 were also 16 or younger so not only was there this huge age gap between me and her but also between me and her fan base and then what also cemented my my mindset on her at the time she was extremely hyped up like at that time when she had nothing to her name she had no album she had no like nothing that was nothing that could give me that I could point to as concrete evidence like oh okay well there's there's a reason behind the hype so by the time that her first album came out out, I was like, she's already way over hype. There's no way that she can deliver on that level of hype. And then at, on top of that, it's like she was hyped up by her fan base, which is a completely opposite demographic. It's like female and very young compared to me, older male. So like, I'm like, there's no way that that fan base there's no way that the hype is gonna is gonna live up to what the fan base has hyped it up to. I didn't actually start coming around on Billy until this these most recent singles that have been leading up to her next coming album. I think that drops on Friday. And if you've been on the channel, if you've watched my Billy videos, you like understand that I've grown to understand the the force, the power, the the like just the star persona that she is. And then on top of that, her singing voice and production and her her and her, her, and her brother like team up to produce all her music, like everything thing about it I'm locked in now I'm completely locked in so I was like before before we go and listen to the next album that's coming out let me go back with unbiased ears because obviously I was extremely biased at that time against her just because you know I, I didn't think that I would like her music so I'm going back for the first time I am hearing this album and the singles I honestly don't remember what any of the singles ocean eyes none of these sound like so I'm super excited about this follow me on this journey right now because yo if you're watching this chances are you've heard the album Album, this is a complete first listen for me. So I'm mad excited. All right, yo, my mind is right. We're primed. We're ready to go. Let's get started. First track, Copycat. Don't be cautious. Don't be kind. Finger on the trigger. Put your trigger fingers mine. <laughs> Holy, oh, man. <laughs> yo. I'm such a dumbass. I've been missing out for five, four years at this point. If I heard those lyrics at the, from the get-go, those lyrics are hard, bro. Push my button anytime you got your finger on the trigger, but your trigger finger's mine, bro. Oh my God, that's a, that's a bar, son. I don't think I was ready for the production to be so dark right out of the gate. Like, it's dark, it's haunting, it's menacing with that heavy 808. And that's really all that there is. She has a very deep voice for a female singer, especially at the age of 15 or 16 when this album came out. Holy shit. All right, yo. <laughs> okay, let's go. Hey. Bruh. <laughs> yo. Yo. Bruh, is she kidding me right now? The amount of swagger just dripping off of this track, bruh. She basically came out here, first track of her debut EP to the world. Not like her viral singles, literally first track of the album. This is you setting the tone for who you, who you wanna present yourself to to the world, to the masses. And this is the way she's setting the tone? This is not music that a 15, 16 year old makes right here. This has so much swagger like she's a veteran in the game. Like everybody wants to mimic and copy her style when she is nobody right here. She's nobody but a viral sensation. She has no footing in the music industry quite yet. But she's like, oh, but I do. Oh, yo, yo. Cause you're just a Bruh. 
If the whole album is like this, I'm gonna piss my pants. And she said, you better love me because you're my clone. Because if you don't love me, that means you don't love yourself because all you are is a copycat of me. Now you know, so I'm sorry, sorry. Psych. <laughs> Yo. Oh. That is a crazy opening track to your entire, not just the album, your entire career. You have, you have nothing to your name besides a couple of viral songs. And here you are with the confidence of a veteran coming through. Yo, and at, at 15 years old, 16 years old, psh. All right, next up is I Don't Wanna Be You Anymore. I feel like this is one of her singles, like back in the day, but I can't quite remember. We go from that very menacing track into this right here. Straight into this like ballad sound. I wish you could feel what you say. Oh. Bruh. Oh, this song. Just the emotional switch up from the first song to this song. It's like it's a it's such a jarring switch. And then the tempo and the the time signature, the song switches from 4-4 four, four to like, this is either 3-4 or 6 eighths time signature, I don't know which one, but just the change of energy and tone in the song and what she's saying. If teardrops could be bottled, there'd be swimming pools filled by models. It's just like, it's her opening, it's opening people's eyes to the amount of pressure that women have, women have in society. She's talking about models and the way you gotta keep your, you know, your figure tied and if you wear a tight dress, it automatically means you're a whore or, you know, that, that whole thing that goes around women can never win it's a lose-lose situation you dress like billy now you're like too tomboyish you dress like a supermodel now you're too slutty like you know what i'm saying such good insight for someone who's barely old enough to drive i do i remember that i remember that line right there This song is exactly why she was chosen to sing the very last Bond, No Time to This No Time to Die. This emotion in the in her singing capability. You can hear the pain and the agony and the frustration and just let me live my life. I don't want to be what you tell. I don't want to be what you want me to be anymore. I don't want to be you. It started raining soon as this song played. Tears in heaven. Would you know my name if I saw you in heaven? the frust not the frustration but just the vulnerability by placing by placing all of your emotional needs into one person's hand bro and she said was i made from a broken mold like from the very beginning was i designed was i destined to fail mentally or was i destined to not live up to societal standards because i was already made from the mold was already broken i was never perfect to begin with why are you placing perfection on me when that's something that's completely unattainable and she said, only only you know the way that I break. That's why I said like placing emotional vulnerability in one person's hand because you're leaving it completely up to that person whether you break. That's something that's completely unhealthy. I love this track, bro. This track is amazing. Nima, she's too good, bro. Why didn't you tell me? Maybe because you were born in 28, 2017 and the album wasn't out yet. The fact that she followed up that first extremely confident, extremely bold, extremely dark and in your face and I don't give a fuck about what you have to say. I know I'm the man or woman. I'm that bitch. The fact that she followed that up with this track and the fact that she even wrote this track at 15 years old. She's so far beyond her years with her lyrics and her vocal performance. We two for two so far. I'm loving what I'm hearing. Bro, it's coming down outside now. I'm coming down. I don't know if that's the song or not. Next up, we got My Boy. Oh. Oh. I will say, I could definitely understand what, how, how do I say this? I could definitely understand dudes who like her music at this point that were over 18 years old. Being underage and making music this sultry it's not a good look for dudes who are over 18 to be vibing this hard. I'm not saying that she was sexy at 16. 
I'm saying that this music right here is sultry AF. That sultriness, that confidence, ah, yo, okay. The hi-hats on this song go crazy, bruh. The hi-hats going nuts right now. Right there, that hi-hat feel to go into the next port, uh, next line. But she said, my boy's being sus. Was sus a thing this far back in 20? How long? I feel like sus wasn't a thing until, did Billy make sus? This hi-hat feel right here. My boy loves this. My boy, my boy. Ah, tempo change? Okay. Bruh. My boy is crazy, yo. Oh my God. I've been fucking sleeping on my tempur mattress with a pillow top with like a humidifier and like a, and a white noise machine in the middle of a thunderstorm. That's how much I was sound asleep on Billy. Boy's an ugly crier, but he's such a pretty liar. Oh. My boy's an ugly crier, but he's such a pretty liar. These are some bars, bruh. My boy, my, my boy, I, 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 hey, real quick, shout out to Phineas, bruh. If he produces whole out, if they produce the amount of music that they do together, like they say, exclusively with each other, that, that's twice in a lifetime type talent, bro. Billy is once in a lifetime type singer ability and talent and, and sheer power and force. But Phineas songwriting capability, production capability, all three of these songs display a whole different level of production uh, production talent. They sound the same because it sounds like a certain producer, like like good producers have a, have a certain sonic where you know that it's them, like Pharrell, but just that combination of her and her brother, bro, for them to be the, this musically inclined Line. All right, dude, go trip over a knife. Shit, it's catchy. The, mel the melody is catchy. Hey. If you want me to be yours, then you gotta be mine. And if you want me to be a good girl, then you gotta be a good guy, bruh. Oh, she said, if you want a good girl, then goodbye, cause that ain't me. She spit, sh this motherfucker spitting, bruh. Three for three, we're batting the thousand. We're going to the Hall of Fame Cooperstown right now as the best batting average of all time. She's already showed three different lanes that she could fit in in the first three songs of her debut album, bro. She's not conforming or she's not mint bolt mending her sound to like fit into a lane that that record labels might have wanted her to fit into. Like the only one that I can think of that I'm right now is is Drake as the opposite. Thank Me Later was good, but it was safe. Billy right here is doing what Eminem did with his debut album. Like, I don't give a fuck. This is me, this is my music. I'm gonna revolutionize things. And she is, and currently is doing that just in the same way that Eminem did with, with Slim Shady LP. Next up, we got Watch. I think you're having ventricular fibrillation. Probably should go to the hospital. And again, we have another completely different sound in the fourth track. That's not one gonna be my favorite track on the album. It's it's probably my least favorite of the four that we heard so far. There's clear EDM like uh, elements in there. There's obviously clear inspiration from that genre of music with the with the way that especially in the hook in the chorus. But other than that, that's really not gonna be a song that I vibe with so much. Like so far in order, it actually probably be in order <laughs> in, the, in terms of the songs that I like. The first one was my favorite, second second favorite, third third favorite, and four was least favorite so far out of a nine track album. And in terms of like an unbiased, like I listening in, like sonically, it's a good track. It's just not a track that I would put on repeat in the same way that I would put the first three. Copycat for sure is gonna go in the cycle. Ain't no doubt about it. And Watch is the least that's gonna be in that cycle. 
All right, but next up, we got Party Favor. Hey, call me back when you get Bruh, this would be mad cute. Wait, you know what? Maybe just for This has serious, serious Never Shout Never vibes with the ukulele sound. Your number might be Oh, I like how the the production is getting clearer. It's actually coming into like out of the high pass filter. I'm assuming we're gonna come into full like full production. No, you don't. Shut your ass up. Hey yo. It's not you, it's me, blah, 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 all those other dumbass cliche breakup phrases. That shit is the worst part about breaking up. Like, just fucking do it or don't. And based off the tone, like, she's saying, like, I'm leaving you because you treated me like shit. I'm assuming the song is called Party Favor because she treated her as such, like, just some, like, a, just something that's, like, spur of the, like, we're just you playing with her feelings. My favorite thing about the track, though, so far is the way that, the way that we went from, like, a voicemail sound, we went from that voicemail sound and we brought it up into full production. Like, like, we're hearing it from his side, but then we now are hearing it from, like, just the side of the listener of the song, not, not the guy that she's breaking up with. It's fire. <laughs> Bruh, the lyrics are so they're not the typical lyrics that I would expect of pop music. Like they're more they're 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 more poetic. Just like right here. I know we could have done it better, but we couldn't we can't change the weather once that weather's come and gone. It's like such a dope way of saying like all, everything that led up to this point of the breakup, if we could go back and change it, we could, but we can't. We can never forget the memories. We can never get rid of the bitterness inside because of everything that we've gone through. So we need to just call it off and break it up. I wish that we could do that, but it's unrealistic to think that. That's such, that's such a dope way of saying that. We'll out the wrong Books don't make sense if you read them backwards, you'll single out all the wrong things. You're not even hearing what I'm intending you to hear because you're listening into it in the wrong way. Just in the same way that if you read a book backwards, you're reading in the wrong way. And because you read the book backwards, you're gonna you're gonna make it fit whatever narrative you want it to fit in your head as because you're gonna take things out of context because you never read it right in the first place. The lyrical style is some is is much stronger than someone I expect of this age to have like the lyrical capability of like using similes and metaphors and not and everything that she did here. It's she literally telling you the story of a breakup without actually talking about the breakup. She's telling you that he used whatever whatever he could to fit into his narrative of why she's a bad person whenever he's he never read the book forward he never listened to the songs in the way intended so of course he's gonna think whatever he wants to think and there's no way that we can change that we can't go back because the weather's already come and gone we can't change the weather even if we could so i'm not your party favor i'm sorry that i'm breaking up with you on your birthday it's fire, bruh. But so far, nothing has gotten to the level of copycat for me because of the, it's like she introduced, like she just hinted at this potential sound that she could have and the swagger and everything. And then she went into, she went into her normal, like these are songs about emotions and these are songs about love and heartache and all of those things. So I'm like that copycat one had me, has still to this point has me mad intrigued, you know? All right, but next up we got Bellyache. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, acoustic vibes. Hey, I like the drum pattern of this song. Ooh, shit, this is art. Yeah, hit that 808. Yo. <laughs> Son, damn. Okay, see the range in the end the, of this song right here. We started out acoustic, acoustic only, and then we had the percussive patterns come in, but only like the higher side, and then the lower side came in, and then the everything completely opened up into like that EDM inspired song right there, all the way into the very last, like as it like came down into the next, the second hook. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. The 808s it, and then right here. That's hard, brother. New fire, son. Holy shit! This is a bop sonically. Oh, the way I wear my noose, like like a necklace, like I'm proud to wear it. Cushion comes back in, and then the comes into the guitar. Oh shit! Yeah, yo, this song is nuts, bro. 
super hard. And you know what I like the most about a lot of her production is that the song is just ends. The song is just over. I'm not a fan of the fade out. I'm okay with like the instrumentals and everything, maybe coming like, maybe you let the beat breathe a little bit at the end and you still stop it. But I like that a lot of her songs, they end with her singing up to like a fucking, like up to a dead stop. Like the song hits a wall. Like that, that is a satisfying feeling for me as a listener. That track was fire. All right, Bellyache is probably under copycat for me. Everything's moving a little bit, but as of right now, that's where we're at so far. Next track is Ocean Eyes. This was definitely her most popular song back in the day, but I can't even remember what it sounds like. For some reason, when I hear Ocean Eyes, I'm thinking of, what am I thinking of? Thinking of Hippie Sabotage for some reason, and I have no idea why. But anyway, all right, let's get to it. We got Ocean Eyes. All these songs are relatively short too. It helps the album move along. I like that. Ooh. Oh yeah, I like that. That bass line is crazy. That line, that line I do remember. You really know how to make me cry when you give me those ocean eyes. That line I do remember, but the sonics of the song, I don't, do, why do I even remember that but not the song? I, I honestly have no idea. I like that. And that's hard. The, the sound is just so serene of this song. I feel like I'm sitting at the ocean and just taking it all in. Like the sound of the waves crashing on the beach. I feel like it's nighttime and we're just in the, we're just walking the beach, like listening to the ocean. That's the level of serenity that I get from this. But also the, o the ocean is a mad dangerous place where humans do not belong. So I can definitely see how she has fear in terms of looking into the ocean eyes because she's never felt this before. But the feeling of falling in love and, and like falling deeply into someone's ocean eyes knowing especially if you've been hurt before knowing that you could potentially be hurt again it's a it's a scary feeling because there's mystery behind the ocean eyes just like there's mystery in the ocean it's like a, the ocean we don't belong there we are not at the top of the food chain in the ocean there should be a level of timidness when you go in there i love that that's my favorite shit of the song so far that's hard if i'm not mistaken this this song was produced like just in their house like in a it's bedroom production, I think is what it said on Apple Music. Like no studio, nothing other than just maybe a decent quality mic and just the know-how and wherewithal to be able to produce a track at this level. The song just sounds extremely peaceful. Like walk, like I said, walking alone on the beach. It's just very tranquil and like almost hypnotizing to a sense in terms of the sonics. Oh my God. It says written by Phineas O'Connell. Did Billy just sing this? Did, did Phineas write, the, write and produce the entire track? This dude's a force, bro. I wish I could be this talented. Like it's a whole nother level of talent that's God given. Ocean Eyes obviously goes crazy. It's still not gonna be above Bellyache or Copycat for me. It'd probably be Copycat, Bellyache, My Boy, Ocean Eyes, Party Favor, then Watch. Like that's the order so far, if I'm not mistaken. That That's where I'm putting it. But the album bangs, bro. The album is crazy good. And I love the fact that there's not another song that sounds like Copycat on it. It just, it just teases you and then like, oh, we'll, we'll give you a little bit of that later. Don't you worry about it. Let me show you what else I got. Love that shit. Next up, we got Hostage. I wanna be alone. Who is the male voice already? Ooh. And hide you in my treasure chest. Bro, this is what I'm talking about lyrically, son. And not to mention that like that, that production moment, chef's kiss. It's those type of little things where there's movement in the audio that don't make the song sound just like down the middle, you know? And she says, I just want to be alone with you. Does that make sense? I want to steal your soul and hide you in my treasure chest because you are, you are my treasure. And I'm assuming we're talking about hostage. Like I want to be alone with you. Like I want to I want to capture you and hold you and keep you as my own in the same way that a hostage would. That's, and, and if that's the case, that's such a that's such a different way of thinking about love. Taking such a negative situation as a hostage and using that term to describe love, you know? This is what I'm talking about, lyricism, bro. I don't know who the guy is 
but it's matching perfectly. I'll build you a wall, give you a okay. It's building up to this. Bro, first off, props to me for calling it before the song even got there. It's just such a weird way to describe love. And that's what makes the lyrics hit because everybody describes love in the same way. I'll build a wall, give you a ball and chain. It's not like me to be so mean, but you're all I wanted. Just let me hold you hostage, bro. And not hostage in a bad way, but it sounds bad because that's the only, that's the only implication that the word hostage could have. But it's more like, I don't want you to go so bad. I like, I want you to be the one so let me hold you hostage i don't even have words for it it's solid gold leaf across your lips gold leaf across your lips gold is fake and real love Oh my God, see the sadness? I knew it was coming eventually. Nothing hurts when I'm alone. I, yo, whenever you open up yourself to love, that means you're opening yourself up to being hurt. You're opening yourself up to potentially having a mate for the rest of your life, having a partner, but you're, you're opening yourself up to that hurt, that love is pain. Your kisses are like gold to me, I treasure them, but gold can be fake and love can be cold. So dope. It's such a negative way of looking at, not negative, I guess, but more so like a misunderstanding of what love actually is because you've known nothing but but pain whenever it's just, all you associate with love is pain because that's all you ever know. They go together hand in hand. That one is also above a couple of the ones that we heard. That one is probably in the top four for me, but Hostage's lyrics, it sounds like you're falling in love and you're scared of losing the person in the future that you're falling in love with right now. So let me just hold you like a hostage. That person might think that you're holding on too much because you're holding on like if they are your hostage, but you don't mean to be holding on to them like that. It's like you're suffocating them with your love you know like like you're doing too much but that's because you're scared of losing the person and the fact that you're doing that might be the reason why the person leaves in the first place so it's like it's a it's a good song it's a really good song and last up this is what i was interested in this one when i saw it on the track listing this last track because it's and burn but it's not even the title it's more so the fact that it features vince staples he's a he's a pretty aggressive rapper for the most part so i'm excited to hear like the dichotomy of what i'm hearing in billy and how vince staples is going to add or contribute to this debut album oh my god bro are they using are they using a match being lit burning and being put out like like, are they using that as part of the instrumental? Really? Lips, hard. Teeth, Super hard. Tongue. Super hard production, yo. My heart skips, beat, beat at once. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. What song did we hear? What song did we hear that was this? I heard these lyrics already earlier. Oh, is it like watch and burn as opposed to like watch and learn? And this is like a remix with Vince Staples. This is the song right here that I wasn't really a huge fan of. All right, now I'm excited. This production is already more interesting. Watch and burn. Yo. Watch and burn. Okay, I would sit there and watch your car burn, watch my heart burn. Now we got Vince Staples coming through in the cut. This might end up being one of the, my more favorite tracks just because of the sonic change, like the way that the song sounds, the production style, the fact that they're using a match being lit and blown out in the production about a song, Watch and Burn. This is about to be crazy. Thanks. Oh my God. That was you know what it is for me about Phineas's production style, I guess? The amount of reverb that they have on the 808s. Like that shit just rings out. Same thing with her voice, it just echoes out longer. Even though the note stops, it like echoes out like we're in this big ass hall in this big ass room of just straight tile. I know. Uh, he likes it's hard. This is why nobody sounds like Billy does, I guess you could say, or why the ones that do try to sound like her are copycats because she brought the vulnerability of her lyrics at times, the swagger and and brought all of that on top of EDM and hip hop instrumentals, like in like instrumentals that are heavily inspired and draw on those two, which was like something that 
at least from what I know, has never, never heard before. I've never heard it before, at least. Vince Staples is so good. We're, we're trying to self-preserve our pride and we cut each other down in the middle of arguments when really it should be about, it should be about trying to understand each other. You want me down on my knees begging you to stay? I'm too proudful to beg. Me down on my knees was safer when I was giving you a wedding ring. We're stubborn and that leads to war and we're drowning each other trying to even the score. Like we're drowning each other, like we're killing each other. We're killing this relationship by trying to settle a vendetta that we have between each other when we fight. It's dope. Go ahead and watch my heart. Yup, 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 yup. Then when the, and then we end the entire album with the match dragon blowing it out. Yo, okay. Last song was hard. I definitely enjoyed that 10 times more than I enjoyed Watch. And it's probably gonna be because of the more aggressive sound of style. And then Vince Staples was to, to talk about like the, the toxicity within like a struggling relationship. Vince Staples was the perfect person to have on this. Could also saw a West Side Boogie on this, but I don't think that's like the same demographic of, I feel like Vince Staples fits on more so than West Side Boogie, even though I don't know why I feel that way. But West Side could have wrote similar, if not better lyrics right there. But Vince was a good addition. A crazy debut album. All right, in order so far. All right, so I think it's gonna go copycat. I don't wanna be you anymore. No, 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 okay, so it's gonna go copycat for sure, number one. I don't wanna be you anymore, number two. And burn, number three. And then bellyache, number four. My boy, number five. Hostage, number six. No, ocean eyes, number six. Hostage, number seven. Party favor, number eight watch number nine. I think that's the order of my list in terms of which ones I like more and, and yada, yada, yada. But the whole album, I definitely understand the hype of why people were hyped about her. She did the variety on the album is really what's up, what's crazy. Obviously, her singing capability is nice. The songwriting capability of her and her brother, nice. But I think it's just the sheer variety of sound. We got ukulele, we got hip hop, we got EDM, we got traditional acoustic, we got aggressive, we got confident, we got swag, we got drip, we got a verse from Vince Staples. Just, just the, just the sheer variety, like all the lanes that she fit in and, and goes down perfectly. This right here. Heat. I'm so happy that I'm doing this before we get to the new album. I don't know if I'm gonna do it a straight up album reaction like this, or if I'm gonna do the album reaction live on Twitch on Friday. If I do the album reaction live on Twitch on Friday, it will be cut down and edited into a similar reaction here, but it'll be with my it'll be with my screen that I have from Twitch along with chat. So if y'all guys wanna see that and, and you wanna see my commentary, see what chat's talking about, if we do it that way. But either way, I would highly suggest following the Twitch just to make sure that you don't miss it if you decide that you wanna catch some of it live. But yo, I'm super hyped, crazy. I understand the hype. I don't know why I was sleeping. Actually, I do know why I was sleeping. It was for the reasons that I said, which I thought were all valid, but they're not valid reasons at all because I was missing out on this. That brings us to the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen. If you like it, if you like the breakdown, commentary, long form review, then consider liking and leaving a comment down below. If you liked it enough, please consider subscribing because we are gonna do more of these in the future. Future. Like I said, hit up the Twitch. And if anybody wants to follow me on socials, I do alert when I'm live on Twitch, when videos go up, all of that. So, and on top of the fact that I'm just a, a humoristic guy on the socials. So follow all the socials. All these links are in the description below. But other than that, I appreciate everybody's time. And like I always say at the very end of all of my videos, go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other. And I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.